We can now post data into our Symfony 4 and FOSRES bundle API. And we've seen how we can send in data either as JSON or XML, and both are supported just fine. So now let's get some data back out of our API. When we generated the album entity, Symfony's maker bundle also created the album repository for us in source repository, album repository. The album repository via extends or inheritance gives us access to all the standard doctrine helper methods like find, find one by, find all, and so on. In this instance, we'll only need the find method. Our get root will expect the API consumer to pass in an ID via the URL. I'm going to take the requested ID and then use this for querying for an album that matches that ID. Then all we need to do is return this object, this album, wrapped in a view. Now, as it stands at the moment, we don't have any code to handle an incoming get request. So it should come as no surprise that when we send in our test, we get back a 404. We haven't implemented the get method yet. So let's do this now. Now, as we saw in previous videos on FOSRES bundle, we only need to follow the conventions and the FOSRES bundle will do most of the hard work for us. We want to handle get requests. Therefore, we need a get action. As soon as we add the get action, because this follows the convention, we can check the router output and we see straight away we now have a route that will match on incoming get requests. The problem is it doesn't have the ID placeholder. As this route will require an ID property, we only need to add this as an argument to the get action controller method and FOSRES bundle will add a placeholder, the ID, on the generated route. Now we need to make a call to find the given ID and then return the result. This will mean interacting with our database and one way of doing this is through an entity repository. In our case, we're going to use the album repository. And as we're going to need it in more than just our get action, I'm going to inject this via the constructor to make it available to all our different methods. Now, if you only need a service in one method, whether it be your album repository or any other service, then you can just inject it into that one particular method. Okay, so we're going to do this as a one liner. We're going to return the outcome of this view, which will return us a view instance. And inside that view, we want to return the outcome of this album repository find one album by ID. This should be an entity. However, it may not be an entity and we're going to have to address that separately. It may be a null. Now you may have thought the tests would all pass at this point and if so, I admire your optimism. Unfortunately, however, our tests fail and in our case, there's actually two reasons why the tests are failing. Firstly, it's because Docker crashed whilst I was recording these videos, which again wiped my container and lost my data. So I've had to bring up a new container, which means I'm going to have to run the migrations again to get the album table back to where it needs to be. Now this shouldn't affect you, but I've left it in anyway, as it is useful to see this problem occurring. It may affect you at some point whilst you're following these tutorials. Now if we send the tests in again, we do get back the error that you're more likely to see. And this is it's quite a big error, honestly, it's quite a lot of output. It can be a little bit tricky to read. So what I would advise doing when you see stuff like this is send the request in manually via Postman, as it's much easier to see, usually, what the problem actually is, rather than relying on BHAT's output. And when we send in the get request, it's a little unusual because we get back a good looking response, kind of. But if you look really closely, you'll see that we're using camel case rather than the expected snake case. So for example, track count would be track count with a capital C rather than track underscore count, which is what our BHAT tests expect. So what we have here is an issue with serialization. So although we did install the Symphony serializer pack, we haven't provided any custom configuration. There is a provided serializer for converting from camel case to snake case, but we need to explicitly enable it. Now, an alternative to this is to implement JSON serializable on our entities, which was what we did in our raw Symphony 4 approach. Whilst the serializer is pretty much set and forget, implementing JSON serializable gives you some more flexibility. Now, you can combine both though, so that does give you the best of both worlds. So at this stage, we have a passing B hat test and all things look good. But what happens if we request an album by ID that doesn't exist? So in our case, say we requested the album with ID 1000. It definitely doesn't exist. So what happens in this circumstance? Well, whilst it's not particularly visually interesting, the outcome is very odd. We get back a response with the status code of 204 or no content. Now, I'm not sure I completely understand the reasoning behind this. I think it's because we're serializing that null and that is then somehow being interpreted as a no content. Even so, it's not the behavior we want. The behavior that we do want is to return a 404, and this is exactly the same as in our plain old raw Symphony 4 JSON API build. So I'm gonna add in a private method to the album controller class. So again, the process that I'm going for is to call this album repository find passing in the given ID. 
Now at this stage, the album is either going to be an album entity or it's going to be a null if we couldn't find that album by ID. If we don't find it, so if the album is null, then we're going to throw a new not found HTTP exception. This is going to result in a 404. Otherwise, we simply return the album to this methods callee. Now, just as a side note there, I really love that code formatting feature. If you ever use JavaScript prettier, you'll know just how nice it is not to have to worry about formatting your code. Make the computer do the hard work. Okay, so we've now updated the get method to use this internal private method. And as such, if we try and request album 1000, then we get back a 404. Now it's quite a long winded bit of output. It's the full stack trace as JSON, but at least it is JSON. And you may be thinking like, what on earth is this all about? But this is only because we're in development. If we switch to production and send in the same request, then we get back a much terser response. It's actually good enough for me. We can edit this error message and we'll look at a way to do this a little later on. But for now, that's getting our individual album done.